The 1989 animated film Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland is pure nightmare fuel, but for some reason, it was still one of my favorite movies as a kid. A year later, Capcom released a game named Little Nemo The Dream Master, and it's surprisingly pleasant. The film Little Nemo is terrifying. I used to put on Watership Down right after watching Adventures in Slumberland just to kind of lighten the mood a little bit. Capcom did a pretty good job of capturing that horror on screen by channeling all of that energy and frustration into a super challenging 3D platformer for the NES. It feels nice to praise this fairly accurate adaptation because it was just last week that I was lamenting about greedy, disingenuous, cash-grabbing software developers with no vision dragging the reputation of a respectable movie through the mud with a soulless game adaptation. Our last episode also covered a movie-to-game title, and I made it clear that I was not completely satisfied with Konami's adaptation of Top Gun. See for yourself here. Little Nemo, on the other hand, I believe was actually done justice by the fine people over at Capcom. This game stays about as true to plot as you can expect to fit on an 8-bit cartridge. The year is 1905. You are sleepy. Just like in the movie, the one and only rough and tumble orange gangster clown Flip is here to wake you up. Here in the game, he just kind of makes a quick cameo and gives Nemo vague instructions, sending him on his way. But I assure you, in the movie, he's a real scary, chain-smoking, infomercial-type con man that you probably wouldn't let be hanging around your kids. Speaking of kids, you play as Nemo, our young, bedheaded, casually-dressed protagonist. Nemo famously can't be bothered to dress up for any event and dons pajamas for the entirety of both the game and the movie. Nemo spends each level traversing through a new random dream, tasked with looking for an undisclosed amount of keys to allow Nemo to advance to the next dream. On his own, Nemo only has all the powers of a little boy. He can move in a few directions and also jump a small distance in the air and return to the ground. Like I said, it's a platformer. However, Little Nemo did implement some pretty neat features that made this game an above-par platformer. What sets Little Nemo aside from other platformers is the Kirby-esque gameplay, where you essentially suck up enemies and take their power until you accidentally press select. This element of the game was definitely not inspired by anything out of the movie. This game's mechanics are all based around Little Nemo taking control of various animals by feeding them drug-laced saltwater taffy he carries around with him in a bag. Once an animal victim regains consciousness, he is domesticated and will share his abilities with Nemo. Frogs will help you jump better, gorillas will take you to the tops of trees, Lizards will walk up walls, and the moles will dig the holes. My personal favorite is the gorilla because he has to wear glasses just like I do. This strange artistic touch is appreciated, but its reason is probably lost to history. These animals are also worn as a kind of armor, as they add a few more hit points that they, with their individual faults, will cause you to lose. Oftentimes, one of these animals is required to advance, but most of the time, they're just there for you to trip over. For better or worse, this is the focal point of the entire game. I genuinely try my hardest to play through as much of each and every game that I review. But games like Dream Master make this process really hard and painful to stick to. Dream Master is a hard game. Most every game on the NES is hard, and even for NES standards, this game is hard. Even if you make it through the first few levels and manage to survive that train ride somehow, each dream to come is somehow more discouragingly difficult than the last. And not only is Little Nemo exceedingly hard, it's also quite long. There are eight stages overall and limited continues. I'm not happy to admit I had to resort to my game genie to check out some of these stages. I've had this game sitting around since I was a kid and I can confidently say finishing this game is outside of my abilities. Have you beat this game before? Tell me about it in the comments below. Now it's time that I need to make an assessment and decide where this cartridge is going to rank on my list. What provocative and unique insight do I have on this title? It's a good game. In all seriousness, it's a quality game that had a pointlessly hard difficulty curve. There's a fair amount of game here, but most of us will never have the patience, time, or devotion to see most of it. There are eight dreams to navigate, and they're all unforgivably difficult. Still, the quality shines through. So I've decided I'm ranking this game, for now, as number two on my list of greatest games for the NES. Here's a cheer for Little Nemo right now, as it's only good by comparison and could possibly fall hundreds of ranks in the future. Now that we're five episodes in, I see how short-sighted and awful my ranking system is, but I'm just going to stick to it. We'll work out the kinks later. Overall, Little Nemo the Dream Master is such a well-crafted game. From the cute graphics, to the good enough movie-to-game adaptation, to the pretty quality soundtrack. Here's the major problem, though. The titular, clown-infested fever dream of a cartoon film was, for some reason, geared towards very young children. And I think that this same small-thumbed audience would have an impossibly hard time to even get through stage two. 
That said, even if most of the areas are inaccessible to the majority of us, the final word is that Little Nemo Dream Master is a better than average platformer for the NES. The film Little Nemo doesn't hold up anymore these days. Rewatch it and see it for yourself if you don't believe me. The NES game Little Nemo, though, still haunts me. Thank you for indulging my haphazard NES side project. Click here to watch the newest episode of my main show, Two Guys Decide, or click here to just watch a whole season of it. Or click here to subscribe.